Hey guys, Dusty Baker of Cross Thermers Bison. Welcome back to our channel. We are in Custer State Park right here in South Dakota. Beautiful, beautiful landscape. It is a bit windy out here on top of the hill. There's not a lot of trees to stop the wind out here. What we're gonna do today is go visit Chad Kramer's ranch. He uh, leases a bunch of land just on the east side of Custer State Park. Basically right over this hill right here. And um, I mean, this is so cool guys that high fence right there is wind cave national park also have their own bison herd right here we're in custer you've got mount rushmore not very far away just very cool chad is a vice president of the nba and he's such a cool guy so luckily to meet up with him met him at an nba conference and um he's uh, has already done lots of things for the nba and uh, he's going to continue to do that and chad's had some pretty interesting um, situations here at the park if you watched any social media or anything of people getting out of their cars like you've seen at Yellowstone or, or motorcycles in this case and uh, people get a little bit too close to the bison that happens right here at Custer State Park and Chad has to deal with those bison so we're gonna go visit him and uh, hang out with his herd Hold on, Pepper. Pepper. What kind of cubes we got here? They're uh, alfalfa cube. Oh, yeah. We got a local plant here about 30 miles down by Hot Springs that uh, well, I guess they started up about seven or eight years ago now. Got out to Red Valley Road this afternoon and I went to for water. So. Five or six. And even now I'm looking this year and. It is nice to have the hydraulics and like. <laughs> Get her. Get, get Pepper. <laughs> First week of October will be 20 years in the park, so. There's John's oh. chicken. Put a little squash flavor to him. So pretty. Yeah, do sign on the dotted line. So I bought my first calves in 1992 back home in Minnesota. Okay. And then in 96, I moved out to central South Dakota here, the Vivian area just south of Pier and worked on a ranch there for four years. It was a new new bison ranch. And then uh, went to central Colorado, the Hartzell, Colorado area for about a year and a half. It's going to, going to college for landscape design. <laughs> Marissa was in that for a little I mean, while. Yep, they, I in Nebraska. In yeah. I did a two-year degree. We had a community college at home in Worthington, Minnesota. I did a two-year degree there and then went to, to South Dakota State and for landscape. And my first semester had a public speaking class. And one of our first assignments was a 25-minute informative speech. Oh. I thought, what the heck can we <laughs> talk about? Can't talk about some bison. Keep keep uh, myself interested, interested let alone somebody else and went home that that weekend and blue mound state park in laverne minnesota has a small herd and i saw that their auction was coming up which i'd noticed the biggest two-year-old bull that year they sold sold him and he went in the next little ring while they're figuring out where to pin him and i remember he made a lap around stopped in the middle and it's about a 40 foot across and he 
took a look and he took one jump and went right over the top of the fence and down the alleyway and was everybody the guy that bought him was sitting in front of us everybody's like oh you're gonna have fun with him when you get him home and i'm thinking they're going it's like that is cool i gotta have some of these <laughs> Talked about it for a couple of years, and then in 92, I finally bought. We started out with nine heifer calves, I guess. And yeah, you got a bull here. Yeah, he's pretty. A little bit here, and then we can, can That's so pretty. Hop out there. You still got a red dog. And then they had opportunity to come out here, out to South Dakota, and found out I was a grass guy at heart, not corn and soybeans. Yeah. <laughs> this is way more interesting. A little more of an adrenaline. Yeah. Hey. They know we got treats. from Fort Robinson down here. And of course, I bought them cheaper than they had been. Yeah. But, well, the Custer cell is the kind of the first. Yeah. You know, where everybody figures out, okay, well, this is this is where it's gonna be at. Yeah, and like last year, well, the last two years in a declining market, I found in a rising market, everybody really watches what the park sale does. In a declining market, they kind of gauge it. But like the last two years now, from our park sale, as the season's gone on, prices have gotten a little stronger. If you look at them per pound price, you know, our calves in early November, they're lighter typically than December, January mm -hmm. sales. So per pound, we're still doing all right, but and it's trending more that way all the time people are especially the feeder buyers now i mean they're looking at per pound price they're unless they really know your program and yeah how your animals perform i started sorting the bulls off the last two years because he's been really good mannered but two years ago when we ran him through with the cows he started getting hooked did he cow and calf and I ended up losing the calf so oh no that next year when I brought them in, him, the two big bulls and a couple of the younger ones, they were off by themselves in the corner, so I just left them behind. And I'd rather run them all with them. She's a bottle calf we raised. <laughs> Here, she wants one of these. Here. There you go. There you go. Do you have a new little buddy, Brooks? <laughs> and so they've been telling me this morning they saw my sticker on my cup. They need a sticker. Josh goes, 
how many of them stickers you got? And I said, I can have Hannah print out however many we want. He goes, Really? I'm gonna get punched in the nose. Oh, yesterday was so was so beautiful. It was nice to get down to Custer for the first time ever, check it out for a little bit, and then we headed over to Chad Kramer's place. Just a nice day. It's finally great to be up here at Custer, and we're excited for the rest of the week and the roundup and everything. But uh, I'm just getting ready. I'm about to uh, head to uh, kind of a media morning. We're going to go out with Kobe. Uh, who's kind of the guy in charge of a lot of the marketing side or media side of uh, this roundup. I just want to give a big thanks to Chad Kramer. What a guy. He's down to earth and um, it's just, I'll tell you what, I've talked about this before, but the bison world is all about good relationships and uh, that guy's a, a good guy to have on your side. And so he was super busy this week and this is like one of the busiest weeks of his <laughs> entire year at Custer and uh, Governor's Buffalo Roundup is, is a huge event. He took the time out one of his evenings away from his family uh, to go take us out on his ranch with his bison and uh, let us spend a couple hours with him. We loved it. Uh, it's a beautiful place and, and he's right there at the edge of Custer State Park and guys that is that's awesome and beautiful land. Marissa and Austin and I loved it and I think Brooks even loved it anymore and she, uh, I think she found a new friend in Pepper. Uh, she loved Pepper, his uh, little blue healer. Guys, I've, I mentioned to you before, but Chad is the vice president of the National Bison Association. He's done a lot already with the NBA, and we're excited to have him um, as an officer up there. And it's good to have people like that. I loved hearing Chad's stories on how he got started in the bison world many years ago. Speaking of, this will be Chad's 20th year at Custer State Park. I'm sure he has seen it all in those 20 years, but coming up in October, it'll be his 20th year at a beautiful park in one of the best herds in the country. Speaking of good herds, you talk about good bison. Chad's got some good bison on his own property. He had some big old bulls and it was, it was nice to get up close to some of those, those big old fellas. A little bit bigger than Big Joe, I promise you. There was some there were some hosses in there. Uh, just, it's good to go see all these different bison at, at different places, whether it's Custer State Park or a, a private owner. Chad's got some, he's got some good animals and he's, uh, he's put a lot of detail into his selection. He's got quite a herd now. He's got over a hundred and I think 40-ish, somewhere in there, a couple more than me. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll get there someday. Go follow Chad, follow him on Instagram. Check him out on Facebook. He's, uh, he's been in the bison business for a long time and knows when you've been in it that long, it's, uh, it's good to have those experienced guys around you. And Chad's one of those guys, so go follow him. Chad posts a lot of good stuff on Instagram with uh, him working bison at Custer State Park and, and dealing with uh, you know, bison injuries and, and uh, uh, from, from the rut, dealing with bulls getting injured and, and gored. And, and you can kind of get a little behind the scenes of what's going on at Custer State Park and, and even his own personal bison herd. So thank you again, Chad, for taking the time out. Can't wait for the roundup. So anyways, I gotta get going and get ready for media morning. Uh, they're gonna take us out and see the herd and then um, that'll be my next video. Thank you guys for watching us.